Thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Richard, and today I'm going to be talking about crypto art market data and trends. Um, just a bit of background my, about myself. So I'm a VC. I'm an investor at One Confirmation. We invested in OpenSea and SuperRare. But I spend a lot of my time on uh, my personal project, CryptoArt.io, which is a website that aggregates um, crypto art market data and sales across different platforms like SuperRare, Nifty Gateway, uh, Maker's Place, Foundation, Known Origin, Heket Nunc, um, Async, and a bunch of other platforms. Um, so we hit a big milestone last month. Uh, that was when the crypto art market became a $1 billion asset class. Like if you sum the value of all the crypto art that's sold uh, since like inception, uh, it just reached a billion dollars, which that's a great milestone. But we're still pretty early if you compare it to the traditional art market, which is uh, 50 billion. So we're only 2% of the way there. And also comparing to the total cryptocurrency market cap, which is uh, 2.6 trillion, of which Bitcoin is 1 trillion. So right now, crypto art as an asset class is less than 1% of cryptocurrencies, which uh, I feel like that's going to be a lot bigger um, in the next few years. So there's still a lot of room to grow from 1 billion. Um, so this is the graph that everyone likes to look at. Um, yeah, as you can see, like, things were pretty flat until 2021 when things just went vertical. Um, and it's crazy, like back in 2018, um, the total amount of volume that happened in 2018 was about 50K. And then now, like periodically, we get sales that are uh, more than 50K, um, like just uh, like one of one NFTs. Um, so a lot has uh, grown since. Um, and even like when it was flat around like 2019, 2020, if you zoom into the data, it w the market was still growing about 50% month over month. And like that's kind of a trend I see where you know, the absolute value on the y-axis uh, might be small, but if it's growing 50% month over month uh, and like you actually uh, like put in an Excel and like uh, project it out, then that's how you end up with graphs that look like this. Um, so, so far in 2021, uh, you see like two big uh, waves of uh, volume. And the first one happened around February. Um, that was a big driver was that was Beeple and Nifty Gateway. So you had open editions. Um, a lot of people were minting. Uh, There's a lot of flipping. Um, that's like kind of when NFTs and crypto art first got onto the mainstream uh, media attention. So you have like CNBC and other media outlets that are first talking about crypto art and NFTs. So that uh, brought a lot of people into the space. Um, and then the second wave happened around August. Um, and that's when art blocks really exploded. And like you had like squiggles, fidenzas, um, ringers, um, and like sort of these, um, like art blocks is like s sort of like a, a mix between like crypto art and collectibles. And uh, because of that, um, a lot of people, uh, especially whales, uh, got in and it funds and traders got into NFTs finally, and that drove a, a big wave of volume. Um, and by the way, the graph is uh, as of October 18th, so um, October is still an up month. Um, so here's a list of some of the most expensive artworks that were sold. Um, obviously, Beeple's uh, accounts for three of the top five. Um, the one sold at Christie's is the, thir is the third most uh, for a living artist of all time. Um, and you see um, X Copy, one of ones on Super Rare. Um, so there's one there. Uh, there's two more here. So X Copy is three of the top ten. Uh, and like, those are some of the first uh, crypto art ever minted uh, back in like early 2018. Um, and he, here's a list of uh, all the top artists um, by their total artwork value. So uh, total artwork value, value is different than volume in that you know, vo um, artwork value is basically like the artist's market cap where uh, it just sums the last sale of like, all of the artworks um, for a particular artist, kind of like their appraisal. Um, and yeah, as you can see, there's a huge uh, power law uh, among the top artists. Um, and you, recognize, you probably recognize many of these names. And the crazy thing about NFTs is like it's a completely new uh, business model for uh, digital artists. Whereas, you know, before digital artists uh, had to make money from commissions uh, and like working with partners like Microsoft to uh, do like a commercial for them. But now they can sell individual works just like how physical artists like painters can sell paintings. Um, so that's why now we have 162 artists that have total artwork value of over one million, which is like completely ridiculous to believe. Um, a, a year ago, uh, and there's over a thousand artists that are worth over 100k. Uh, and all of this just happened in the period of uh, a couple months uh, in 2021. Um, but it is a very uh, extreme power law, um, as with like any uh, industry, like sports, entertainment, which is why we see the top 32 artists 
uh, are worth more than half of, uh, their works combined are worth more than half of the entire crypto art market. Um, so here are a few more graphs. Um, these are more super rare specific, but uh, that's because super rare has been around since uh, April 2018, so the data is more complete. Um, so the, in the top left corner, uh, the big trend you notice there is um, the orange is the secondary volume, the blue is the primary volume. So secondary volumes are now starting to account for a significant portion uh, of like total artwork volume. And in fact, last month, uh, secondary volume actually flipped primary volume for the first time. And that's because a lot of the early OG works like X Copies, Beeple, X Copies, Beeples, uh, Dimitri Cherniak's, uh, Videodrome, Robbie Bratz, those that were minted uh, back in 2018 are now being resold for like crazy amounts of money in the millions of dollars. So uh, that's what's been a big driver of volume, uh, this second wave. Um, and as, as a result, uh, if you're minting on a platform like Super Rare, like artists um, also get a share of that royalty. And that's where you see uh, artist royalties now at an all-time high. And it's crazy that artists are making more from their royalties. For a lot of these artists, they're making more from their royalties than what the primary sale was uh, like two or three years ago. Um, and so you can see the average artwork price is like skyrocketing, which has uh, the trade-off in that a lot of that volume is being driven by uh, whale collectors. Uh, so you see like the total number of collectors and artwork sold is uh, not as high it was as high as it was in the first wave. Um, that's because a few number of artwork sales are uh, drive, driving a significant number amount of the volume. Uh, and it's being uh, driven a lot by whales. So um, there aren't as many new collectors that are entering this space uh, this time around. I think a lot of that also has to do with the fact that ETH price is pumping. So um, that also prices out a lot of people. So uh, I'll end with hot takes for 2022 and next year. Um, I say so far I've talked about uh, crypto art and like visual art. Uh, I think music NFTs is still super underrated. Um, and well, I feel like for music NFTs, we're gonna see a graph similar to this where it's just you know, flat for many months, like a year, and then suddenly it just uh, goes vertical as like the tastes change and uh, suddenly music NFTs become the object of desire for um, whale collectors and like there's a lot of mimetic desire there. Um, I say um, there's been a lot of focus on fractionalizing um, artworks and making artworks more accessible to the masses. I think a better method than fractionalizing artworks is fractionalizing collectors where uh, people can pull together the money and buy an expensive one of one rather than like taking uh, exp expensive artwork and uh, sharding it into different pieces. So I think there's going to be more tooling and infrastructure there. Um, so that's all I got. Um, this is my contact info, and thanks for listening.